For the longest time, there was only one option for upgrading the LCD on the Sega Game Gear, and that was the solution from McWill, which was released over five years ago. It wouldn't be until the very end of 2020 for a new option to emerge. And here it is. The Magic Screen mod from the folks over at Retro Kai, based out of France. The Magic Screen is touted as providing all the benefits of the McWill kit while being much easier to install. Let's find out if that's true. Hey everyone, how's it going? My name is Tito and welcome to another episode of Retro Renew. Today, we got something really special for the Sega Game Gear. What we have is a brand new LCD upgrade kit. Up until now, the only way to upgrade the Game Gear's LCD was to use McWill's solution. Now, the McWill kit is absolutely fantastic. I actually did a video on it recently. If you want, you can check it out by clicking on the card at the top of your screen. Now the kit I'll be showing you is something totally new named the Magic Screen, and it comes from a company located in France called Retro Kai. Based on what I've seen and read about the kit, it appears to be easier to install into the Game Gear thanks to some creative solutions. Now that'll become more apparent when I go over the kit's components, and also during the installation segment of this video. Now before we get started, this kit is only compatible with Game Gear versions VA0 and VA1. You can typically find which version you have by looking at this location on the motherboard. As you can see, for my particular installation, I'll be working on a VA1 single ASIC motherboard. Now, it is strongly recommended to have replaced all the original capacitors on the Game Gear before attempting this mod. The original caps that were installed on Game Gears from the factory are very likely to be faulty. If you have recently replaced them, then you should be good to go. I already replaced this Game Gear's capacitors with Retro 6's Great Ceramic Capacitor Kit. If you want to see how to do that, check out my Game Gear recap video linked in the description below. Great, so before we get started with the mod, let me go over the components of Retro Kai's Magic Screen Kit, as well as some additional upgrades I'll also be using. So beginning with the Magic Screen Kit, we have this very unique PCB called the Easy Soldering Guide, or ESG. This component of the kit is what will make the installation much easier. You'll notice it has all of the contacts on the bottom that will align with the Game Gear's LCD connector contacts, and we can simply drag solder to make the necessary connections. This little PCB does a lot and saves us from having to solder to the individual LCD pins on the Game Gear motherboard like you would have done using the McWill kit. The next item included in the kit is the LCD driver board. This converts the Game Gear signal so that it can be properly displayed on the included LCD. Speaking of which, this is the LCD. It's a TFT panel very much like the McWill kit, and I wouldn't be surprised if it's the same model. Regardless, this should provide phenomenal image quality, certainly much better than the Game Gear's current LCD. Next, we have this LCD support bracket. These look to be made of some injection molded plastic and not 3D printed like most kits. So this seems to be very good quality. I can't wait to see how these install into the Game Gear. Also included is some thin gauge wire, which will be used for the six connections we'll be making to enable all of the functionality in this kit. And last is this ribbon cable, which connects the LCD driver board to the ESG PCB, which interfaces with the Game Gear's LCD pins. So that's all the contents of Retro Kai's Magic Screen Upgrade Kit. To really make this build unique, I'll be using this custom gray Retro 6 shell that I bought from Handheld Legends, as well as these gray buttons and white glass screen lens. In addition, I'll be replacing the original speaker with this one, which I also purchased from Handheld Legends, and this awesome USB-C power board, which I'll swap in place of the original. All right, so that's pretty much everything. We got a lot of work to do on this Game Gear, so without any further ado, let's get right into it. To get started, let's open up the Game Gear by removing the six Phillips screws and single game bit. Once open, disconnect the power and audio cables to separate the two halves.
Then unfasten the eight Phillips screws securing the motherboard so we can remove it. Then proceed to unfasten the four Phillips screws securing the LCD panel to the motherboard. Carefully peel away this tape which supports the LCD ribbon cable. Then add some flux to the LCD pins and gently peel the ribbon cable off while heating the pins with your soldering iron. Do not just rip it off. Remove any residual solder using solder wick. This is important for when we install the ESG PCB. Now we're going to start removing components, starting with the L2 coil. Then remove resistors R56 and R57. Next, desolder the CFL light tube. And then these two fuses. Cut the 34 volt wire shown here. I put a piece of electrical tape on both the connector and the wire to prevent any shorts. Now we need to solder the ESG to the motherboard. I unfortunately did not capture any footage of me soldering to these four points shown here. However, it is strongly recommended to solder to those points first to anchor the PCB sufficiently for when we drag solder the pins. And now for the tough part. Add some flux to the pins as close to the ESG edge as possible. Then add a small amount of solder to the tip of your iron. I'm using a bevel tip for this. And then carefully drag your iron along the pins as shown here. Once you're satisfied with your work, test the connections using your multimeter and the test pads shown here. If your connections are good, we can move on. Now position the LCD driver board like so. Use the provided ribbon cable to connect the ESG to the driver board with the pins facing down. I'm just doing one last test to make sure all my connections are still good. Now it's time to prep the LCD with the aligning brackets. Slide the brackets onto the LCD panel like so. Then screw the panel into place starting with the top left screw. then the bottom right, bottom left, and lastly, the top right screw. If everything looks good and straight, then tighten all the screws down. Next, let's wire everything up. Connect BL1 to the second pin on the brightness wheel and BL2 to the third pin. Next, we're gonna connect the test pad T10 to the bottom pad on resistor R32.
connect the 32 megahertz pad on the LCD driver board to the pad labeled FB1. And lastly, connect the start and button two pad to the right pad of capacitor C38 and the left pad of capacitor C37 respectively. All these connections are nicely documented in the included instructions. Moving our attention to the shell, remove this screw post above the LCD opening. Then install the speaker. I'm reusing all the old button membranes and giving them a quick clean with IPA. Next, install the buttons and membranes. Go ahead and peel the protective film and then insert the motherboard into the front shell housing. I am reusing the film to protect the LCD during reassembly. Now secure the motherboard with the 8 Phillips screws. Then insert the LCD ribbon cable into the driver board. Go ahead and install both the power and sound boards into the rear shell. Now connect the three cables and button up the console. And lastly, install the brand new glass screen lens. And there you have it. All right, so that was actually quite a bit easier to install than the McWill kit. As far as overall quality, I think both kits produce the same great quality image. However, when it comes to the installation, the Retro Kai kit is easier overall. One important tip I have for installing the Easy Solder Guide, or ESG, is to take your time and go slowly. You want to make sure your dwell time is long enough to also heat the ESG solder pads so that the solder will stick to it. Dwell time should not be too long, but it also shouldn't be too short. It took me a couple tries to get it just right and make all the necessary contacts. Also, this kit offers the same exact display modes as the McWill kit. By pressing start and button 2 at the same time, you can cycle through each of the seven display modes. I'll just go through them really quickly so you can see all of them. And of course, a welcome feature is the ability to adjust the brightness. This was absent in the McWill kit I installed, but I believe McWill is planning to add this in a future revision of his kit. Great, so now I want to quickly go over the pros and cons. Starting with the pros, as I've said earlier, this kit is easier to install. The amount of components that you need to remove is far fewer than the McWill kit, and there are also fewer wires to solder thanks to the ESG PCB. Speaking of which, the ESG PCB is a great solution to tap the various video signals from those tiny LCD contacts on the motherboard. With the McWill kit, you needed to solder six wires to those tiny pins, which requires a steady hand and some fine soldering skills. Another fantastic feature that was missing from the McWill kit is the ability to adjust brightness. The Magic Screen utilized the brightness control wheel, and this feature has been integrated seamlessly. And lastly, we have the included aligning bracket for the LCD. I really like how Retro Kai utilized this method to align the screen to the Game Gear motherboard. It's very well done and a bit easier to align than the McWill kit, which needed to be soldered in place. As for the cons, this kit, while easier than the McWill, is still quite challenging to install. It may be slightly easier than the McWill kit, but it is far from a drop-in solution. Now, due to the nature of the Game Gear's design, we will probably never see a drop-in solution, 
but for now, this is as close as we're gonna get. The only other con is the ESG PCB. I know, I said it was one of the pros, but while I like the concept, soldering it to the motherboard is like soldering in the dark. You cannot make visual confirmation that each solder joint is good. You need to rely on your multimeter to ensure a proper joint has been made. There's nothing wrong with that, but I feel a better solution would be the use of a flex cable. While I understand that that will most likely be more expensive to produce, I believe it'll be easier to install. I have to give RetroKai credit. This is a fantastic kit and it does make upgrading the Game Gear LCD easier given what was previously available on the market. I am absolutely thrilled that there are so many new mods coming out for the Game Gear. While it has largely been overshadowed by the Game Boy, it appears that it is the Game Gear's turn to be in the spotlight. So I'm curious about what you guys think. Does the Magic Screen LCD mod seem to be easier to install? Are any of you planning to install one of these kits into your Game Gear? I'd love to hear your thoughts, so let me know in the comments section below. I hope you did enjoy this video. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing to the channel. You can find me on Facebook and Instagram at Macho Nacho Productions. I release content every Thursday, so be sure to turn on notifications. And as always, see you next time.